Good evening. I'm going to read you an extract from Passage to Paradise. Uh, this is a chapter on Ginsburg. I get a call from Alan Ginsburg. He's arriving in Athens. I pick him up at his hotel and drive to Alan Anson's flat. On the way, he asks me, how are the boys in Athens now? I reply, I would not know. He and Alan are old friends with different agendas. Ginsburg, well famous. Anson, unknown to the general public. They both have enormous respect for each other. Sitting in Alan's favorite room with wilted flowers, the piles of newly arrived books and worn out furniture, the two poets blend their backgrounds masked in verbal carousels of poetic insight. I am just a one man audience of a literary treat and enjoying every minute. After three hours, I take Alan to Verini Stavone in Pangrati. He is wearing a surgical mask, a touch of flu, he says. A friend walks in, a young American girl, and I invite her to join us. This is Alan Ginsberg, I say, by way of introduction. Sure, she said, obviously not convinced. Next day, Alan is giving a reading at the Rex Theatre on Panepistimiu Street. There are about 1,500 people in the audience. Alan looks up at them and says, in Greece, all the publishers have translated my works and published my poetry without my permission and without paying royalty fees. I consider this a great honor and would like to thank you. The crowd loves it. He reads just one poem called Smoke, a repetitive mantra using just the word smoke with an occasional don't smoke thrown in. I admire Ginsberg and have followed his intellectual meanderings over the years. He fights back poetically and almost succeeds in the invisible war of injustice. On being asked about his poetry, he says, poetry is not an expression of the party line. It's that time of night, lying in bed, thinking what you really think, making the private world public. That's what the poet does. I like that.